All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to multiply fractions, and I'm going to give you three examples. This is going to be our first example. So with multiplying fractions, you just multiply across. It's pretty quick and easy, pretty quick and easy. So 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 3 is 15, but then you see that, oh, this fraction can be reduced, and we can divide this fraction by 3 over 3, which gives us two fifths. All right, so this fraction, this multiplication problem gives us the answer two fifths. Now, there are some things you could do to make this quicker and shorter and easier. It's called cross canceling. So in this case, what we can see is we could see that three is really three over three is equal to one whole. So right here is one whole. That's a sideways one right here. Because 3 over 3 is equal to 1. So really, this becomes 1 times 2, which is 2. And this is really 5 times 1, which is equal to 5. So that's called cross-canceling. So you're going to watch for that in the next couple of examples. All right, <clears throat> in this example, uh, we've got a couple of mixed numbers. So the first thing we have to do is change these two mixed numbers into improper fractions. So 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10, so we get 10 thirds times 1 times 4 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so now we have 5 fourths. All right, now we could multiply straight across, uh, but in the previous example I showed you that there's some nice little shortcuts that you can do called cross-canceling. Cross basically, it's like thinking about how to reduce a fraction, only in this case it's diagonally speaking, because if you think about it, this 10 can really be thought of as 2 times 5. And this 4 can really be thought of as 2 times 2. So all of a sudden, we see a 1, a hidden 1. A 2 over 2 is equal to 1. So right here, this 2 and this 2 equals 1. There's our sideways 1 right there. So what we're left with is 1 times 5 times 5 in the numerator, which is equal to 25. And in the denominator, we're left with 3 times 1 times 2, which is 6. And that's an improper fraction. So in this topic, it's typically polite to change it into a mixed number. So we've got 4 and 1 sixth as our final answer. Now in this problem, uh, as in the previous examples, we need fractions, either improper fractions or just common fractions. And right now, uh, this is a mixed number. That's pretty easy. So 2 times 9 is 18 plus 1 is 19. So we have 19 over 9. That's pretty easy. But what do we do with this 6? Well, we need a fraction. So we're going to take the 6 and we're going to put it over 1 because 6 and 6 over 1, same fraction, same answer, same number. And now we can see that, oh, we can do some reducing, cross-reducing and cross-canceling. We could see that the 6 can be written as 3 times 2. And we could see that the 9 can be written as 3 times 3. And there's our, our 1. 3 over 3 is equal to 1. So there's our, there's our 1 right there. That's a 1. So really, we end up with 1 times 2 times 19, which is 38. Over. And down here we have 1 times 1 times 3, which is 3, and that equals, oh my goodness, what does it equal? 12 and 2 thirds. There's another way to do this problem, it's using the distributive property. You could take this 6 and you can multiply it by the 2 and then you can multiply it by the 1 ninth. And sometimes doing it this way, it, it makes it a little easier. So 6 times 2 is 12 plus, then we're going to do 6 times 1 ninth. Now over here on scratch paper, we can do 6 times 1 ninth, which is 6 over 1 times 1 ninth, which equals 6 ninths. We could just multiply straight across. Let's not even worry about reducing, and we get 6 ninths. So this becomes 12 and 6 ninths, and of course 6 ninths 
reduces to 2 thirds because you could just divide by 3 over 3 and we get 12 and 2 thirds. So there's another way to do this kind of a problem using the distributive property.